Studio 6 Welcome to Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. An intimate space where every week you receive inspiration about the fascinating world of interior design and all the benefits and effects in your lifestyle. My name is Francesca, and we will create meaningful conversations to unveil the enigmatic perception of interior design as a discipline that simply focuses on aesthetics. We will expose everything from interiors to its relationship to architecture, surroundings, history, and culture. We will challenge the misconception of interior spaces confined in architectural boundaries. We will understand that interior spaces provide the setting for human activity and are created to fulfill human desires and needs where sensory pleasures and engagement are celebrated. That is the built environment, the connection between individuals, physical spaces, experience, emotions, and its social consequences. I am your host, and I invite you to join the design conversations that will elevate your consciousness about interiors. Consciousness that will embrace the beautiful possibilities of manifesting all your senses in your space. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode six of Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. I cannot believe that we are about to say goodbye to 2023. This is the last episode of this year, and I cannot be more grateful for your company during this new podcast journey. Thank you for your connection with me and for your continuous support. It is a privilege to have you as my loyal listener each week. Thank you very much for tuning in with me to create this intimate space between us. This podcast is presented by Studio Chess Interior Architecture Design Studio. In this sixth episode, we are going to converse about textures and patterns and the contribution of hapticity in interiors. You probably haven't heard about the word haptics before, or possibly yes, but haptics is a common term in the design world. Haptics engage your natural and vital sense of touch. It's that simple. It is the feeling of experiencing something beautifully tangible for the first time. In one of my favorite design books, The Eyes of the Skin, Architecture and the Senses of Juhani Palasma, the anthropologist Ashley Montagu stated that the skin is the oldest and the most sensitive of our organs our first medium of communication, and our most efficient protector. Even the transparent cornea of the eye is overlaid by a layer of modified skin. Touch is the parent of our eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. It is the sense which became differentiated from the others, a fact that seems to be recognized in the age-old evaluation of touch as the mother of the senses. This is so true. The skin is the largest organ of the human body, and touch is the sensory mode which integrates our experiences of the world and of ourselves. All the senses, including vision, are extensions of the tactile sense. The senses are specializations of skin tissue, and all sensory experiences are modes of touching and thus related to tactility. Texture is the surface quality of a material. It results from the inherent structure of the material or from the application of some type of coating over the material. Most people think of textures as the relative smoothness or roughness of a surface and associate certain textures with certain materials. Metal is smooth, while brick is rough, for example. Although every material has a specific texture, the perception of texture is closely tied to the texture's visual qualities. The relationship of texture with surrounding textures, the viewing distance, and the lighting. Altering any one of these can affect the final perceived appearance of the material. Texture can be either actual or visual. Actual texture is the physical quality that can be sensed by touch. The smoothness of polished marble, 
the roughness of concrete, or the fuzziness of a wool fabric, just to mention a few. Visual texture is what people imagine a surface to be simply by looking at it based on a memory of similar textures. Yes, it can get this fun and interesting. Every actual texture has an associated visual texture, but visual textures do not necessarily have an actual texture. You know that concrete is a rough texture without touching it. However, artificial prints of wood grain on flooring tiles look textured but are actually quite smooth. In the last episode, I shared with you my experience about the interior space of the Japanese restaurant Morimoto in Chelsea, New York. On the main level, the installation on the ceiling and one wall appear to be folding ripples of beige fabric, but on closer interaction, it turned to be solid fiberglass sprayed onto fabric. This is another perfect example of visual texture. A texture is also affected by its relationship to nearby textures through scaled relationships. Texture creates the atmosphere and influences the perception of space. On the other hand, pattern is the repetition of a decorative motif on a surface. It is closely related to texture, but the individual elements of a pattern are usually discernible, meaning at a reasonable viewing distance as individual items, whereas texture appears as an overall tone. However, if a pattern becomes very small or is viewed from a distance, it can blend into a visual texture. Pattern can be built into a building or into a material like porcelain tile or concrete block, or it can be applied with wall covering or paint for small scale applications. Pattern can add visual interest to a space, change the scale of a room, and reinforce the design concept. Like texture though, it should be used carefully. Excessively bold patterns or the juxtaposition of too many patterns in the same space creates a busy and overpowering space. Although I need to make the disclaimer that there are overpowering spaces that are well thought out and well curated conveying a strong design narrative. The boldness is on purpose, and every decision made around it supports each other and makes the space successful. I invite you to explore the work of Karim Rashid, an Egyptian-born and Canadian-raised industrial designer. His designs include furniture, lighting, surface design, luxury goods, among others. His work is mischievous, unconventional, eccentric, and whimsical. Patterns come in all shapes and forms and can be applied in so many ways. Patterns can be made by repeating shapes, lines, or colors. It is a way to create interest and produce obvious directional movements. Remember the movement and repetition on the ceiling design in the hotel lobby you vacationed in last summer? and the herringbone pattern on the wood floor in your favorite ice cream shop in town? Ah, and the elaborate honeycomb pattern that you enjoyed when visiting the vessel in Hudson Yards, New York City? Huh, interesting, right? But don't forget how soft and comfortable the leather sofa was at your friend's house when you visited last week. And my gosh, what a soothing experience to enjoy the look and sound of the water fountain feature wall in the new restaurant we attended last night. It was beautiful. Do you see? Do you feel? In small or big scale, we are surrounded by patterns and textures in our environment. These design elements work cohesively to enhance surfaces and spaces and elevate the human experience. When I think about patterns and textures, one of the experiences that come to my mind is one of my design business trips to Chicago. Cloudgate, best known as The Bean. This is a public sculpture by Indian-born British artist Anish Kapoor. 
This is a public art located in downtown Millennium Park in the heart of Chicago. The bean's reflective surface was inspired by liquid mercury. The shiny exterior reflects the people moving around the park, the lights of Michigan Avenue, and the surrounding skyline and green space perfectly encapsulating the Millennium Park experience. The polished surface invited me to touch the surface and enjoy my own reflection, giving me an interactive quality to my experience. I loved it. Texture and pattern are crucial in creating visually appealing spaces and engaging experiences. Depth, dimension, reflection, visual interest, and haptic quality are incorporated through these important elements to transform and make a space unique. As Palasma said, touch is the sensory mode that integrates our experience of the world with that of ourselves. Even visual perceptions are fused and integrated into the haptic continuum of the self. My body remembers who I am and where I am located in the world. I could be here another hour chatting with you about the relationship of design and the senses, but I am going to keep it short and sweet today and leave valuable information for further episodes in the new year. I wish you a prosperous 2024 full of blessings and incredible life experiences. I am grateful for all the experiences, opportunities, lessons, and new paths 2023 brought to my life. Thank you, 2023, for giving me the most amazing audience and the opportunity to share my knowledge, my passion, and my professional design experience through this podcast. I am excited for 2024 to create and receive all the good things ahead. Let our New Year's resolution be this. We will be there for one another as fellow members of humanity in the finest sense of the word. Thank you, Goran Pearson. Beautifully said. If you feel identified and connected with this podcast, please join the Design Conversations and invite your friends and family to be part of our community. I will be here every Friday to chat with you about interesting topics within the fascinating interior design world. I'll chat with you in the new year when we will continue developing interesting design conversations. If there is a specific topic that you want me to discuss, or if you have any questions, please feel free to DM me through Instagram or Facebook. Also, you can send me an email at thinkdesignprovoke at gmail.com. Please follow me on my social media platforms at Studio Chess to continue the design conversation. In the episode notes, I am including the contact links for your reference. If you find value in this content, please share this episode in your social media or chats, and remember to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio platform. Thank you for your attention and for being on the other side. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you. I'll chat with you next Friday, and remember, everything in the built environment is by design, and you are part of it. Happy New Year! Ciao, ciao!